Okay, welcome to the third part of this tutorial series. Um, I just tried to record this, um, these two files in one part, and that went way too long, and YouTube said I couldn't upload it. So I'm re-recording this. Um, there'll be two more parts, including this one. Uh, in this part, we're just going to do the file list.php file, um, and then the final part, we will we'll do the download file. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be able to, not have to, won't have to rush through this like I did a moment ago, um, and well, it'll be better. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is include this uh, connection init.inc.php uh, file, initialization file again, um, and then we just need to do a query for the um, file information. Um, I'll just briefly explain how it's going to structure this file. Um, here, we're going to do the sort of logic backend type stuff and then here we're just going to loop over the rows from the database and display the table rows. Um, if I go to my browser just go back to here just reload that you see at the moment um, it's just a table header there's no actual information sort of there. Um, so the query we're going to do is this one I'll call it files because it's getting the files use the mysql query function um, and we're just going to do a select query, select file name and the file expiry from the files table. And that will select all of the rows um, and return them all in a MySQL query result, which we will then process here using the MySQL fetch sock function. Uh, that returns a array representing the row where the array keys are the um, array keys are the column headings and the array values are the values of that column. Um, it'll probably make more sense once I've coded it so just watch. I'm gonna use a while loop here. Um, I have a video or I'm gonna have a video on how to uh, use how to do very the three main types of MySQL query um, so have a look in the basic section if you don't know what I'm doing here. Um, MySQL fetch sock files. MySQL fetch sock function takes one parameter, uh, and that parameter is the query result, query result, which we gave the variable files to. Um, I'm going to check if that while that is not equal to false, we're going to do something here. Um, basically, the, the reason this works is that the MySQL fetch sock function will return the current row and then advance the row pointer by one. Um, so uh, once you get off the end of the table, if you like, uh, it returns false, meaning that once you get to that point, this loop will stop. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do in here is close the PHP tag, open a new one, because we're going to have some HTML between these. Um, HTML is a table row uh, with two table columns, two cells really. So, and in this first one, we have another PHP block, which is going to output the file name. See, this uh, file name corresponds to the column name, um, and then in the second column, we'll do something very similar. PHH file expiry. Like so. If I now go back to our page, just hit reload, you see we get two files, I've uploaded two files with the same name, and they expire sort of here and here, then and then. Um, these times are timestamps, the raw timestamp, number of seconds that we mentioned before. Um, you can format this using the date function, like so. It takes two parameters, the first one is a string that represents the date format, and the second is the timestamp. This second parameter is optional, so it, um, it defaults to the current time. So, say if you wanted to output the current date in a sort of nice format, you wouldn't have to do that. You can just, whoops, you can just um, omit it completely. You could just date like that. One parameter. Uh, okay, the format we're going to use is day slash month slash year, minute hours, oops, minutes and seconds. Um, there's these letters will be replaced with, well this one will be replaced with the day, number day like 5th, 
actually 8th uh, of the year will be released for 2011. Um, the php.net page for the date function has a huge list of all the symbols and what they will be output as and they translate to. I just hit reload, you see now we get a slightly nicer date format. I always use this format, I'm not really sure why. Okay, the last thing we need to do within this file is link this file name to the download page so that we can download it. Um, the way we're going to do that is using an anchor tag, link tag, like so. Close that there. Um, the link is going to be download.php and we're going to send a get variable which is going to be the file ID. And this file ID is going to be something we're going to output with PHP again. So echo row file ID. Um, this tends to get a bit messy with these closing and opening PHP tags all over, but not really anything you could do about that. Um, yeah, uh, one thing you might have noticed is that we didn't uh, select the file ID in this query at the top. So if I now go to this page and just hit refresh, you see it links sort of fine. But if you see in my oh, I view the page source. Um, you see that it's linked to download.php and file ID equals this, which is uh, error from PHP, notice undefined index file ID, blah blah blah. <coughs> uh, the reason that's happened is because we haven't selected the file ID in our list of columns, so this doesn't have a value. So to fix that we just need to select the file ID. If I now go back here and just hit refresh, so if I hover over these now you get file ID equals 3 in that bar at the bottom. And if I view the page source, we get file ID equals 2, whoops, file ID equals 2 and file ID equals 3. Um, so that's pretty much it for this file. Um, sorry I have to separate this into two parts, but it's just the way it is. Um, okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully you'll join me for the download file.